Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Wargames Geek. Today I'm painting a Saxon or Dark Ages standard bearer or bannerman and this is a 28mm metal figure that I've base coated with a matte white primer spray. As you can see he is a nicely detailed figure. In the 10th and 11th centuries the tunic was the standard clothing worn by Anglo-Saxon men. The tunic is tied at the waist by a belt and then the neck opening was probably uh, tied by string. Now it's time to start painting this figure so I'm going to start off with uh, using elven flesh on all of the skin areas and as you can see there's not an awful lot of skin on this character there are just the hands and the face to do there so let's uh, get some paint onto those and now we're onto the face so just make sure you get some good paint into the eye sockets there um, and then just try and come over the top of the moustache if you can and I'm just going to get a little more paint and just come under the the hat that he's wearing there uh, just try and get that nice straight line there onto the cheeks as we come round just again nice and steady with the brush if you can try not to get it onto his hair too much and then just a little bit more there and then we're going to come in and do the uh, the mouth under the beard. Now I've got a little bit on his, his hair there, so I say it doesn't matter too much um, but just finish that all up, make sure you've done all the areas that need to be done and we can go over that once that's dry, we can go over the, the hair on his chin and um, tidy all that little area up. So that's the hands, the face and uh, that's that bit done. The next colour I'm using is Skeleton Bone and that's for the hair, beard and moustache. It's quite a light colour uh, but it will look lovely once it's been shaded down. And just take your time when painting uh, next to the skin areas. If you do make a mistake you can paint the skin colour again in afterwards uh, but try and take your time and uh, that will save you time in the long run. So I'm now just painting in the sideburns and just being as careful as I can up against the skin on his cheeks and just around the ear there. And then I'm just going to bring it back around to the front and just sort of touch up the areas that I can see that uh, need a little slightly bit more paint uh, just over the moustache again and then just get a bit more paint on the brush and just very slightly fill that in make sure we're not touching that skin area and round to the other side so we're going to get that other cheek done and then once we've done that we're just going to turn the figure around just to show you that now so turn him around and what we'll do is we'll start doing his hair again in the skeleton bone colour and you can see there's quite a lot of detail in the hair so I'm, I'm thinking that once we get some shading into that it will really start to, to look good. So get that on and once we've done that this is what he looks like so far so his hair's all painted in and uh, the beard and moustache are done. And whilst that dries I'm going to start getting some paint onto the banner and this is a wyvern or dragon banner and I'm using weapon bronze for the head of that and make sure you just get paint into the, all the recessed areas on the figure. And now that's done I'm going to give it time to dry um, just give it a, a few minutes to dry and then we're going to go back to the uh, figure himself and for that I'm going to start looking at painting in his tunic and the colour I'm going to use for that is uh, scaly hide which is a sort of light green colour. This again is a nice light colour uh, that once shaded should look like it has plenty of depth into the folds of the tunic. So just get that all over the front of the figure, uh, on the tops of the arms and then of course the bit below the belt uh, above his knee The sort of uh, looks a little bit like a kilt I suppose but it's not, it's just one piece of material uh, that made up that tunic. So let's get that on and get that all painted and round the back as well and just take your time here we're just joining up to where the uh, tunic meets the hair so just take your time there try not to let that bleed across again but you can just tidy up if you need to and we need to just fill all of that back area in including the bit below the belt again there it's just one big piece of material that uh, would have given him his tunic so I like to paint it in stages so when the top half is done I then move on to the lower half of the tunic and just take your time and enjoy the process. These are colours that I've chosen. You can do 
Dark Ages figures in any colours you like really. Natural colours uh, seem to look best such as greens and browns but also reds and whites uh, fit into the era quite well. Look these are your figures so just use your imagination, play around with the colours and most of all enjoy the process. So I'm going to the green here, just going to finish off the lower half of the tunic and it's starting to now take shape. I've finished painting the main areas of the tunic now and I'm going to pick out the collar detail and the belt now and for that I'm using desert yellow. It's important to take this step slowly so use a fine detail brush if you have one and just a very small amount of paint and just to get that onto that detail on the uh, front of the tunic there and once we've done that what we'll do is we'll come down and we'll start painting in the belt and I'm again using the desert yellow for that I don't see any uh, need for another colour there we could have gone for leather brown I suppose but um, you know these are just tabletop standard so we don't need to go into too much detail and throw loads of different colours at it but you know again as I said before it's up to you you paint it it's your figure again take your time on the belt just to make sure you get paint into all of the recessed areas and um, just come down the side here where the where the join is with the green so just take your time on that try not to bodge that if you can help it and then once that's all done our figure will look like this and as you can see he's starting to take shape now uh, we've got a little way to go there's a fair bit still to paint but uh, as you can see he's starting to take shape so the next color I'm using is leather brown for the shoes on this chap and we'll get those painted in now I hope you're enjoying this video and if you are please do like comment and subscribe to my channel it really does help guys so hit that subscribe button for me thank you so that's the first shoe done and now we're going to go on to the uh, other side and uh, again just the same color just that uh, leather brown for these for these leather shoes and let's get that first coat of uh, brown on there so have a look and make sure you've not missed any areas I can see a little bit there that I've missed on the front of that leg so we'll get that one painted in and then once we've done that we're going to go in and start painting in his hat so I've already talked about suitable colours for um, the clothing and for this I'm using pure red uh, for the Phrygian cap or Liberty cap as it was uh, called and uh, it was at this point I realised that uh, with the red uh, Frisian cap and the uh, in his little beard there he actually looks a little bit like Papa Smurf but hey um, it's a suitable colour from the period so I'm just going to go with it uh, so that pure red there on the Frisian cap and there we have that all done uh, and ready to move on to the next stage. So I've skipped ahead slightly, but what I've done here is I'm using desert yellow for the trousers. Uh, apologies for the earlier mistake between the two yellows. The, uh, the one on the belt and the collar of the tunic are demonic yellow. This is desert yellow, slightly darker, sandy colour, which I'm using for the trousers. So just make sure we get into all the recesses uh, on both legs. And what you'll also notice here is that I've actually done the shield boss and the shield itself. So I've used plate mail metal for the shield boss and then the actual wooden shield itself I've done using a monster brown and that will need as you can see another coat. So let's get those trousers finished off and then we can move on to the next bit which will be doing the actual shaft of the, the spear or um, banner that is holding onto. So just finish all that up, make sure we've got paint into all of the recesses and just have a look around the model and just see if there's any areas where you may have missed bits that need touching up. And then once you've done that, we need to then start going onto this uh, banner that he's holding onto. So I was going to do the shaft first, but I think what I'll do is I'll do the top, uh, the sort of tail of the wyvern, and for that I'm using electric blue. So this type of standard was first used by the Roman cavalry and the head of the dragon's mouth would be open and air would flow through billowing out into the cloth tail, much like a modern windsock. It's also believed that some kind of whistle was mounted inside the neck of the wyvern uh, to make a terrifying noise as the wind rushed through it. So that's the head and the tail of the standard now complete. So I'll just turn that around so you can have a good look at it. And I'm just going over the top now of this um, shield. Uh, I've wasn't quite happy with the colour so I've gone over the top of the shield uh, for its second coat and for that I'm using fur brown. So just take your time around the shield boss, try not to get any paint onto that um, area that you've already painted and just take your time going around 
there, nice and steady. And that's that bit sorted. And then what we need to do is obviously the rim and the back side of the shield as well. So just to give that all a, a second coat of uh, this fur brown color. Okay, so uh, yeah, sorry about that, but uh, changed my mind. I just wanted to uh, the colors to contrast a bit. So the next color I'm using here, it all, almost looks like it's a black, but it's, uh, it's the Army Painters Oak Brown. And that's what I'm using for the actual uh, shaft of this uh, banner here. And this will need two coats because it's a fairly thin paint. Uh, I've made a bit of a fairly thin mix of this one. Uh, but just nice and steady as you go around those hands. And then once that's all done, we should have something that looks a little bit like this. So the next stage is to put him in the quick shade dip and let's see how that looks after we've done that. So he was dipped in strong tone quick shade uh, and left for 48 hours to dry completely. And then I used some matte anti-shine spray uh, and he was then based using sand and a bit of dry brushing. And then the yellow flowers and foliage were added just to sort of finish him off. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please do like, comment and subscribe for new videos every Saturday. Thanks for watching.